people say things like this? Well, it, it, it found out eventually that um, astronomers, even uh, ones from very, very uh, well-reputed schools, the, the big-name schools, mm. don't study electromagnetic uh, theory. They don't uh, really know much. They don't feel they have to know much other than uh, gravity, um, uh, fluid dynamics, mm. um, Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And I, I guess some of these bloopers uh, is stuff like you know black holes and and of course the the redshift uh, dilemma. I guess. But before before we um, go go there, I mean, in a in kind of in a nutshell, is it possible to kind of ex- explain the the electric uh, universe theory? Well, uh, it's 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 tough. But let me let me try to give you a sort of, oh, my mm-hmm. dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Astronomers are, 
are using now, not only radio telescopes, but infrared telescopes and mm-hmm. X-ray telescopes, we're able to to utilize a, a wider range of the of the electromagnetic spectrum than just this very little narrow band, which we call the visible light. Yeah, yeah. Which is what <laughs> we've been limited to for ever since astronomy got started after Galileo. Mm. So the I guess the the idea is that uh, plasma cosmology. Uh, well, well, let me go back to that rotating galaxy. The, mm. the the laws, the the rules by which plasma operates, are per, give us a very uh, one-to-one correspondence with that kind of rotation, that galaxy rotation. A good friend of mine, who uh, uh, is was one of the directors of the Los Alamos National Laboratory here in the States, mm. uh, did a I, I think it was his Ph.D. thesis, or certainly shortly thereafter, uh, did a, uh, a simulation on a, on a supercomputer of yeah. a, a bunch of uh, plasma. Mm-hmm. Uh, just he, he put in the rules of uh, how plasma operates, that is, Maxwell's equations and, and the Lorentz equation, mm-hmm. and just duplicated the way uh, the, that, that swarm of, of, of plasma, you could see it evolving into a galaxy, and it was it ended up rotating in exactly the same way with exactly the same profile <laughs> as real galaxies do in space. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Newton's Newton's laws uh, will not not enable us to to explain that kind of rotation, but uh, uh, Newton's law does. Donald, uh, sorry to interrupt, but th- that's very interesting because I've heard this theory regarding you know uh, dark matter that. They, they came up to this theory basically because the the computer uh, models that they uh, were were running on the universe uh, they, they kept you know the, the the model kept falling apart in these computers and they have to basically add a whole lot of matter to kind of keep the the structure um, uh, together isn't, isn't that right have you studied this well the uh, the, the, the there's there are two different things there's dark matter or missing matter and then there's dark energy and they're sort of oh, similar uh, in my mind they're they're all fairy dust <laughs> that is, that is, uh, see if I can remember my acronym fairy dust is something like uh, uh, frequently invoked uh, uh, inventions to uh, that are, are I, I can't remember the acronym yeah. but they're they're conjured up to defend untenable scientific theories uh, so yeah. when your theory doesn't work out well you can invent an invisible um uh un- unmeasurable uh thing that just has to be there uh, <laughs> because we know that our theory is right yeah <laughs> and we measure this uh this expansion of the universe that's where the dark energy came from is, is uh. because the uh the einstein relativity mm. uh will not explain the expansion at the at the rate at which it is perceived to be expanding <laughs> there's the dark matter or missing matter was to explain this thing that I'm talking about, the idea that the, the galaxies don't rotate as they should, quote-unquote, if if Newton's law is the only thing that's at work out there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what I, one of the things I, I should mention that I, I think I uh, I wrote to you about is that um, the I mentioned Dr. Tony Peratt, who, who did this simulation of galaxies. His, hmm. his thesis advisor was a... Uh, I, I, I was going to say very famous, but <laughs> he should be very famous. A uh, <laughs> Swedish electrical engineer. Oh. His name is Hannes Alfheim. And okay. uh, hmm. I don't know whether the, the normal walking around Swede in Stockholm, if you mentioned Alfheim's name, whether he'd say, oh, yes, of course, or <laughs> whether he'd say, who's he? I never heard of him. I, I guess the, the latter is uh, correct. <laughs>